Good morning, children. How are you? I hope you are all safe at home. So, children, why are you not coming to school? Yes, due to COVID-19. I think you are all following the precautions. So, children, are you missing the school? Yes, I know. So, we are doing these online classes. So, please utilize these classes and follow everybody. Okay. So, as I know, you are, uh, as I know, I am Tulasi and uh, working as a teacher of English at ZPHS Burdhanapalli. So, children, today we learn the topics like verb and its types. Okay, children? Yes. Uh, do you know what is a sentence? Yes. A sentence is a made of a subject and a predicate. So, have an example. Sita eats an apple. Okay? So, this is an example. As you know, Sita is subject, eats verb, and apple is object. Yes? Right. So, I have used here a predicate. So, what is a predicate? A predicate is a combination of verb and object. Yes. Children, suppose if you remove this eats. So, the sentence is Sita and Apple. Is it a complete sentence? No. So, we have to put eats a verb. That means the verb is a very important part in a sentence. The main word in a predicate. Okay. So from this we can say a meaningful sentence cannot be completed without a verb. So now we came to our uh, topic the verb. So what is a verb? A verb is a word which describes an action. That means what here Sita is doing? Eating. What she is eating? An apple. So here from this we can say a verb is a word describes an action or a situation. What is a situation? What is a situation? That means what we are doing. Or otherwise we can say the verb tells what a subject is doing in a, a sentence. Did you understand children? What is the verb? So, okay. Now, we take some examples. That is play, come, sit, uh, rise, swim, like this. We have so many examples. Okay. Now, we will discuss about the types of verbs. As you see here, the types of verbs. Here the first one is main verb. And helping verb. So now we differentiate between what is a main verb and what is a helping verb. Do you know children? We can call the main verb as a principal verb or lexical verb. We can call it as a principal verb and lexical verb. What is a main verb? The main verb is a word which describes an action. That means the main verb doesn't depend. It can stand, it can stand alone. So here, if you see this example, Sita eats an apple. Here, eats is a verb. It doesn't depend on anyone. So that is the main verb. Okay? Now, every main verb has five forms. How many forms do you have? Five forms. Those are base form. We call it as a base form, past form, participle, progressive to infinitive. So, how many verbs, how many forms do we have in for any subject? Any verb? To infinitive form, base form, past, participle, progressive. We can call this one as 
as a continuous. We can call it as a continuous. What are these? Nothing but the base form is verb V1. Past is V2. Participle is V3. And the progressive form is V4. So, let us take one example. If you take sing. Sing. Sings. Sang. Singing. Sung. To sing. Okay, children? This is V1, V2, V4, V3. And this is V5. Nothing but the. We can't say it was a V5. It is a to infinity. Okay. Here you have one doubt. What is the sing and sings man? Right. The sing and sings is used according to the subject. As you know everyone, we have three persons. First person, second person and the third person. The first person is always I. I am the first person. Second person is you. And the third person is he, she, it. So these are the singular forms. If you take plural form, we call I become we, you become you, he, she become they. So if you want to use the verb before the subject, you have to use I sing, we sing, you sing, you sing. He, she, it. This is the third person singular. We use here since that is S form. Where we are using this one? Third person singular we are using sings. That means we have to say he sings, she sings, it sings. But the plural we have to use sing. So that's why we are using sing, sings as a verb V1. We call as a base form. Sang, we call as a past V2. Singing, that is progressive or continuous. Sung, participle V3. Okay, what is this? What is this to sing? So this is a to infinitive. This to infinitive is used to tell the purpose. That means, for example, if I ask you a question, why are you going to school? Then you will say, me, I'm going to school to learn. What did you say? To learn. That means, we are telling the purpose why we are going. For example, taking another example, why are you going to market? To buy the vegetables. That means your purpose is to buy. That means to purchase the vegetables. So that's why we use this to infinity. Okay children? Then. So coming to this one. This forms. So to sing. Sing or sings. Sang. Sung. Sing. Okay? Right. Another example. To play. To play. Play. Plays. Played. Played. And play. Okay? Next one. Uh, if you take uh, to eat. Eat. Eats, ate, eaten, eating. So we can write uh, like this uh, for the forms. Okay. Now, children, did you observe anything from this one? Yeah. You write here sing, sang, sung, singing. Why this one? Play, 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 play. And from this one, eat, ate, eaten, eating. Yes. Here, the sing is different from sang and sang is different from sung. Here, the play is played and play is played. That means here we add a ed form, but this is different. Yes, children? When the verb is different from base form to the past tense, and the past participle, we call this verb as regular verb. Irregular verb. 
What is this? Say again. Sing. That means this verb is different from past to participle to their base form. That is irregular. When is coming to this? Play. The play is play, play. So these have no, no different pattern. These are added with the D or ED. That means the verbs have added by D or ED. Those verbs are called regular verbs. The verbs have different pattern. That is from the past and the participle are different from the base form. Those are called irregular verbs. Yeah, no. Okay children. So we are telling the main verb. In this main verb we have a regular and irregular verbs. Regular and irregular verbs. Once again I will tell you the definition is. A regular verbs have, have same pattern. That means uh, the past tense is the uh, same as the participle and uh, it forms the base form. Whereas the regular form have uh, different pattern. They are different from past and the participle. Okay children? So this is about the main verb. So coming to the helping verb. We call a helping verb as a auxiliary verbs. Why we are calling it as a helping verb? Because this verb does not de depend, that does not have a, a complete uh, auxiliary verbs, that means helping verbs. So these are dependent verbs, they cannot stand alone. That means if you, someone asks you, what are you doing? So then we will say the answer, I am writing, I am writing the notes like this. Here the writing is the main verb and am is the helping verb. So it depends on the write. It depends on writing. So coming to the auxiliary verbs we have 24 auxiliary verbs. Those are divided into primary verbs and model. Model auxiliaries. We can say model auxiliaries. So Primary verbs, these are 11. So these 11 primary verbs are be form verbs, do forms and have forms. So coming to this, be forms are is, am, are, was, were. Whereas do forms, do, does, did. Have forms, have, has, had. Okay children, why we call this as a primary auxiliaries? Because these auxiliaries can act as the main verb also. If someone asks you, who are you? I say, I am a teacher. That means here, there is no continuous tense is there. So here, am acts as a main verb. So that's why we call these primary verbs as auxiliary verbs. If you say, you can say, I have a car. That means a position, you have a car. Or uh, I do the work. You can write like this. I do the verb. Here, am, have, do. All these primary verbs act as both helping verbs and the main verb. So that's why we call these verbs as primary verbs. Okay children? Coming to the models. Here, the models are 13. What are those? Will, shall, may, can, would, should, might, could, must, Need, ought to, dare, used to. So coming to this, models. We can say model auxiliaries. What is a model? Do you know children what is a model? Okay. A model is a, helps us to express a mood in a, a sentence. Okay. What is a mood? Do you know what is a mood? In grammar, mood means attitude of a speaker. What is that? Attitude of a speaker. That means my feeling, I, I my feeling, what I want to convey to you, that is the attitude. For example, if you write like this, I will write an exam. What are you saying? I will write an exam. Here, your attitude is you are going to write an exam. That means will. So here the speaker is saying the uh, future thing. So the attitude of a speaker. 
coming to the another example i can uh, uh, play a guitar that means here i have an uh, ability to play the guitar that means uh, it is my mood that is uh, i can uh, do i can play that guitar so this from this we can say a mood is uh, helps to express an attitude of a speaker that means the mood so here we have some rules also children what are those rules for using uh, the models what are the rules here the rules are first one no two model auxiliaries cannot be used at a time no two models co occur in a sentence that means i can and i i can uh, will uh, write the exam we cannot say like this that means i can i can will write an exam so this is wrong you have to use only one auxiliary the second rule is no subject verb agreement no subject verb agreement that means you can use any subject with the models that means i can write he can write she shall so in this way the third one is the verb be when always come after auxiliaries like this be when always comes after after models that means i will write an exam i can play a guitar so these are the rules you have to follow the next thing is here every models they perform different functions that means every model has some <coughs> functions to perform those are if you see will when will we use will we use will for futurity that means i will go delhi tomorrow i will write an exam you say like this shall shall is used for suggestion or offer suggestion or offer offer means suggestion means shall you go to uh, shall you go to uh, delhi some like this or suggestion means giving him another offer offer means shall i take this shall i carry for you this one where is may here may expresses possibility here it may expresses possibility here possibility means uh, when you want to enter the class what will you say may i come in that means sir uh, you are asking a, a permission you are asking a permission so here we can uh, use this may for permission also for the may it may rain so there is no a uh, certain there is no 100% uh, the rain will come we are just predicting that the rain will come where is can can is used for the ability so ability so like here i use no i can play guitar that means i have an ability to play the guitar where is the wood this is also this wood is also for offer and this should is also for obligation when you want to put an uh, a, a thing for anyone you can uh, use a should this might is for uh, permission same as like that uh, may and this could is for request if you want to take anything from your friend how will you ask could you please give me that one so you can ask like this and here the must the must is used for compulsory that means when i put a class on uh, sunday for you i say you must come otherwise when you are in the road you uh, the policeman will say you must follow the traffic rules that means we have to do that one as a compulsory so reminding these four we will discuss later so so coming to this uh, the auxiliary uh, we have uh, completed and coming to the a uh, stage and the dynamic did you know about the stage this is a new topic for you so here the stage we call it as a stage verbs and the dynamic we call it as a action verbs okay now what is the action verb action verb is nothing but we express physical activities means eat that means we are doing some swim so we are swimming play we are playing go we are going so action verbs are 
perform physical activities go come eat sit play uh, grow like this and one more thing is this action verbs can be seen we can see these action verbs so whereas uh, if you see the stative verbs that is nothing but the state verbs here these state verbs are indicates the situation or thoughts thoughts or uh, uh, emotions feelings and uh, sense for this uh, we use uh, we express this state verbs what are those the state verbs are for example if you take own this own is feeling that means it belongs to me only whereas sense we have a sense like uh, a smell taste like this and the thoughts and emotions thoughts and emotions are uh, like uh, allow and so on okay children why do we need uh, to differentiate uh, these uh, verbs why should we know what is the difference between uh, the uh, stative verb and the dynamic uh, verb because we must know why because if you take an example for a stative verb for stative verb i say i have a car i said like this i have a car here what we use have otherwise rana likes and ice cream here likes is a stative verb as i said the like is a uh, thoughts and emotions okay rather likes a ice cream here i use it likes okay children next come for example coming to the action verbs action verb means example children are playing in the garden playing in the garden here i used play why because this is a physical activity we can see the physical activity whereas here likes is rather doing any physical activity no it says that she likes that means here her emotion is uh, telling here children we can write uh, uh, rada is uh, liking an ice cream we can write like this rada is eating a is uh, liking an ice cream no we cannot write and where is here i so for example i am having a car can you say like this no we cannot say like this why because in english there is no continuous form for state verbs there is no continuous form for state verbs that means we cannot say radha is liking an ice cream uh, um, sita is smelling a flower uh, i am loving you we cannot say like this i am loving you is it a correct thing it is an audible uh, to you no we cannot say like this why because this love is a stative verb so here we have to write i love you not to say i am loving you so students please remember that we cannot use continuous form for stative verbs we can use continuous form for only action verbs children did you understand okay so i hope you all understood the lesson so we will meet in the another session okay children thank you for listening this lesson